You're about to watch me read A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson. I'm pretty excited for this book. I feel like I do have high expectations for whatever reason. I think I always do when it comes to murder mysteries because, again, because of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, that's really just like made me like, whoa, these books can be really, really good. And so I just have high expectations. I really hope that I don't have too high of expectations, but for whatever reason, I really, 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 really do. So yeah, from my understanding, this book follows along our main character and she's a librarian, a librarian, and she married this sales guy. And I think they had like a very fast marriage. They knew each other and then just boom, they got married. And a year into the marriage, like things are going well, but there's always been these kind of like weird things where like her husband comes home and he has like blood on him, like on his collar or something. And so she looks into it and sees that all of these places he's gone for work, there are a lot of unsolved murders. And she's like, is my husband a serial killer? And so that's the premise of this book from how I understand it. And so I'm excited to find out like, is the husband a murderer? My gut says probably not because that's what it wants you to think and murder mysteries and thrillers are always like that but obviously i won't spoil anything for you so yeah without further ado let's read a talent for murder oh but wait you already know the drill this has a dust cover or a dust jacket i've seen people call it different things i've just always called it a dust cover but i don't like these things they move around a lot and it's really gross so i'm gonna take it off and i'm gonna see if there's a design underneath and like what color it's gonna be under here. I hope it's gonna be red. I hope that it matches. Let's see. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah. Yes, okay, this is good because it matches this. I hate when they don't match or when they don't have a design underneath. So yeah, this is good. So let's read this book for real. So I'm a little bit more than 100 pages, which is also like a little bit more than halfway through A Talent for Murder, and here are my thoughts so far. Peter Swanson's writing is really given like Stephen King kind of style, which I'm really digging. This story really reminds me of the Holly Gibney series, especially the trilogy with Mr. Mercedes. That, like, it really does give that kind of vibe to it. And it also kind of reminds me like when I read Holly, and I read Holly before I read any of the other books because I didn't realize that you should have read the other books before. This book is kind of like that as well because this is apparently <laughs> the third book about this character, but I got it thinking that it was like a standalone, which I guess it is like a standalone, but it's probably better if I read the other two books. So I'll probably, <laughs> depending on how this book, if it continues to go as it is, I'll probably get the other two books from Peter Swanson as well, like in this kind of like Lily series, because I think it's pretty cool. Something really interesting, and I don't really see it often, is this is third person and first person. So Lily's perspective is first person, but every other character is in third person. And I actually really think that's really neat because I love both of those writing like styles. And Peter Swanson has kind of done it in a way that it's not like weird or annoying. It's like good and adds more depth to the story and the characters and what's going on like at the same time. So I think that's cool and I don't really see it that much, but I think he does a good job with it. And I've definitely already been surprised in this book, which is great. The way part one ended, I gasped. Like I was like, no way, <laughs> but yeah, it seems like yes way. So wow, okay, this is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm really excited about this book. So far it's exactly like as I expected. It follows along Martha, who's our main character, and she reconnects with an old friend named Lily because Lily had helped Martha get out of this like abusive relationship that she was in when they were in school together, like university. And so Martha's like, hmm, my husband, there's a lot of like connections to like my husband and these like weird murders and stuff. And if she's wrong, she's gonna ruin her marriage and she doesn't want to do that because she's pretty like chill. Like she's not in love with the guy, but they're comfortable with each other and so she's okay with that so she like she's like okay who can i reach out to like who will actually help and she's like you know what lily she hasn't talked to lily in a long time but like it makes sense 
because Lily had helped her before and so she reaches out to Lily they meet and it's like bam they're friends again pretty much and now they're both investigating and finding out is her husband actually responsible for these murders so so far so good I'm, I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to see like where the rest of it's going to go especially because it's already halfway through and I, I started this book this morning and it's barely the afternoon so <laughs> yeah it's it's good pacing as well so yeah uh that's my those are my thoughts so far I'm excited to continue to read I will update you either a little bit towards the end or when I finish this book um if there's three parts in the book so I'm on part two if there's three parts that'll probably be, be my own reminder to be like oh I'm gonna update you on the third part here so yeah I will see you whenever my next update is almost done a talent for murder so I just finished part two and this book really like I mentioned already it's definitely given Holly Gibney kind of vibes as well as Bill Hodgins and so that's the cool kind of dynamic because it's Lily who kind of reminds me of Holly and then there is Harry who kind of reminds me of Bill and they basically they work together and they're trying to like solve the crimes and stuff so there's other books about these characters as well this is like the third but I guess it doesn't matter what order you read them in because <laughs> it still seems to make sense to me but I think it's really captivated and what I really liked about the part that I just read is that you get the internal monologue of the killer who the bad guy is what are their thought processes what are they doing what kind of made them do what they did and you also get a bit of backstory about their childhood and kind of some of the stuff that they thought as a kid all the way from like what their first murder was to the present day and so i always love understanding like the bad guy what drives them all of this and this book is doing that so it's like you really understand and it's like yeah you don't like this character you want this character to get caught so yeah it's really fun i always love in these kinds of stories where you follow along the characters and they're talking to people who know the bad guy or have some relation or even just like a little bit of information about like the murders and stuff and how all the pieces end up like coming together and how they follow this trail and it's just a fun time and it's not like super graphic either which I feel like is pretty rare for like a kind of a murder mystery thriller story but maybe I'm comparing it to the most recent kind of really gory book that I read which was the book of doors and that was really really gory so I feel like in comparison it's everything's just like mid now in terms of like that kind of gross ickiness but I don't really like the gross ickiness and so this book is definitely up my alley and I'm really shocked at like how short it is too so like yeah there's a lot of good stuff in like a very small amount and the pacing is pretty good as well so yeah i'm enjoying this book and i will continue to read it and i will update you when i finish it with my final thoughts I just finished A Talent for Murder and this book definitely surprised me in multiple different areas. Even the ending, really every single part had something that I was like, whoa, what? Like that's so cool. And it was just, it was honestly a really fun, chill, not like chill, but like, you know what I mean? Like thriller kind of story. It wasn't super gory. It was easy to read. The pacing was really good. The mystery was good. Lily and like Martha's characters, super interesting. All of the characters, the killer guy, very interesting. Just everything about it was really fun to follow along. It was really short, like I mentioned. And I think that it really was similar, not to the same level, but it was definitely sim similar. And even in the acknowledgements at the end, it talked about Stephen King. And so I think anybody who likes Stephen King would definitely like this book as well. And I enjoyed it. I really think like Lily's character is so clever. And I love that. I love when characters are thinking like 
20 moves ahead, 30 moves ahead, and you get to kind of watch them in action. I also thought that it was really interesting that you get first person and third person. I absolutely love the way that this was handled in this book. It made so much sense and it was just great. I've never, like, I think I've only read like one other story that did that, but I can't recall which story it was at the moment, but you don't really see it that often. And if you do see it, sometimes like it's done pretty poorly, but this book did it in a really good, really tasteful way. I loved the show Criminal Minds when I was like a young teenager. And this kind of reminded me that, of that in a way, the same kind of like you're following along the characters, there's like the murder, you're investigating, you kind of actually know who the murderer is because like you're following them and their story once it's kind of figured out. And I always like that. Like, I think I like both. I like when you don't know who the murderer is and you have to try and figure it out. But I equally like when you know who the murderer is and you follow along their thought process and like the psychology behind it. And so this one was definitely like a psychological thriller. And I had a lot of fun with it. It was, it was fun. Well, as fun as like a murder mystery like thriller can be, you know? I think I am definitely interested in reading the other books by Peter Swanson, especially his Lily and Henry like story that this one is part of. So similar to like Holly Gibney and Stephen King's writing, she's in a bunch of different stories, but there's like an order of what you're supposed to read. This is the third one technically, but it's still like a standalone, but it probably would have been better if I learned about Lily and Henry's characters before because now I'm a little bit spoiled about like what those other stories will have in them and like all of that but I mean that's okay I think it's still good so I will be awarding a talent for murder a total of four stars I feel like neither of us are surprised about this I had a good time with it I really don't have anything bad to say about it to be honest maybe it was too short I would have liked to see more maybe I don't know like it's not like my favorite thing in the world like it's not a five-star book but it, it could be somebody's five-star book it was good it was well done yeah that's pretty much all i got to say about that <laughs> so the next book that i'll be reading is tress of the emerald sea by brandon sanderson i am so excited about this book he wrote it as like a secret story for his wife and he wasn't actually gonna publish it he wrote it just for his wife and she liked it so much she wanted him to publish it and it's like oh, that's adorable. That's, it's honestly like husband goals. <laughs> and so this is a really fun, it looks beautiful. It's part of his like secret stories collection. And I've been wanting to read more Brandon Sanderson now that I finished the Stormlight Archive series. So this is what I'll be reading next. It's just a one-off, I believe. And so it'll be good. It'll, it'll keep me, keep me steady until my next Brandon Sanderson urge to read more of his books. Lucky for me, he's got lots of books. So <laughs> if you're interested in watching me read Tress of the Emerald Sea or Emily Henry or Elsie Silver or Ali Hazelwood or <laughs> a bunch of other names of really awesome, incredible, cool authors, definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on the bell notification. That way you get notified anytime a new video comes out. If you enjoyed this video and if you have any kind of thriller, murder mysteries that you recommend, preferably not super, super gory. I can handle a little bit of that. Please comment them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.